Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are so grateful and thankful that we could be here today. Thank you, Lord, for those that you have brought out this morning. We pray that you'd bless the services throughout this day. Lord, we pray that you would bless the Sunday school time that we have. We pray for each of the teachers and the students that you would bless and move in each of the classrooms, Lord. We pray for the students that they would clearly uh, understand and, and hear the word of God. And Lord, we pray that you would speak to the hearts of those uh, young people. We pray that you bless the teachers and fill them with the Holy Spirit. And Father, we pray that as the word of God goes forth today, that you would bless it in a great and mighty way. We know that it'll never return void. Uh, again, Lord, thank you for all your blessings this morning. Uh, Lord, you're a great and wonderful God. We appreciate you so much and thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for a home that we can look forward to. Uh, someday. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God that we have, the Holy Spirit. We have, again, just so much to be thankful for. Give us a blessed time, Lord, today, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is good to be back here. We missed you all. We missed the church. We were in some really good churches down south and uh, enjoyed ourselves immensely, but it's always good to be back uh, because this is our home. And since this is our home, it's always good to come back home. It's good to see all your smiling faces, or at least maybe you're smiling inside. I don't know. <clears throat> but again, I'm, tonight, what I'm going to do tonight is uh, two things. Um, Thomas is going to give us an, a missions update on his trip to Mexico with pictures, he says. And then I'm going to give a trip report of our th almost three weeks being gone if I can figure out how to do pictures. I don't know if I can do that or not. I haven't. I gotta, I gotta have some help from our IT guys for that because I don't know how to get pictures off my phone and onto a computer. <clears throat> There's got to be a simple way to do it, right, guys? I, I don't know. Magic. <laughs> so uh, we'll see about that tonight. Uh, also, we're gonna have a game dinner meeting tonight. We've got to have that. The game dinner is less than a week away. It is Saturday, this coming Saturday. So um, we're gonna do that tonight, right after the evening service. Uh, I see that uh, you all turned your clocks ahead, because if you didn't, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> so I'm glad that you remembered it. We always, every year, every time this happens, we always wonder <clears throat> who is going to show up in the fall early or who's not showing up at all for Sunday school. I wonder if we'll have, have anybody showing up at 12 o'clock thinking that it's 11 o'clock. We'll see. Uh, this Friday, there's no school. It's called Educator's Day. And so for Educators Day, us educators don't come to school. I don't know where the logic is in that, but no school on Friday. And um, game dinner is Saturday at 5 o'clock. We've had very few people sign up for that. I don't know what's going on this year, um, but just very few people. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, you need to sign up, please, even the church members. And then tonight we'll figure out what everybody's doing. We'll get that all taken care of. Please invite people. Uh, we were at a funeral yesterday for Dick Brasser, Pastor Brasser, and I actually invited somebody to the, uh, to the game dinner, and so we need to do that. We need to get people invited, try to find a lost person. Uh, I, have, uh, I was sitting in a bank the other day on Friday because our bank card got hacked on our trip, so I had to go to the bank and get a new card. I invited the gentleman that I was talking to to our game dinner. He said he's going to be out of town this weekend, but he really thought it was a great idea because I saw pictures of deer all in his office. I said, you a hunter? And he says, yeah. I says, and then I told him about what we do. And he says he can't make it this, this time. And I said, well, maybe next year. And so always try to be inviting. We've got some nice little cards back there that uh, we printed up and some larger ones that you can pass out. Uh, but those little cards are nice. You stick them in your pocket, and if you see somebody, just give them the card. It has all of the details or as much as you can get on a little tiny card. Uh, but uh, be inviting people. Try to find lost people that will come. Brother uh, Barnett will give us a good gospel message uh, Saturday night, and then he's preaching all day on, on Sunday, so we're looking forward to that. He called me when we were down south, and we had a nice conversation. The Doug's Fish Fry Fundraiser, say that 10 times fast, D Doug's Fish Fry Fundraiser, can't even say, uh, we'll be at the Five Star Bank, Doug's Fish Fry Fundraiser at the Five Star Bank uh, on the 23rd, right? That's still on. <clears throat> Him sing on the 24th. Friday night, 7 o'clock. Hope you'll be here for that. We're looking forward to that. And then the ladies' prayer breakfast. Now, listen, ladies, we have a special surprise for you. Nancy Staubel is going to be here, our missionary widow. 
She called me, she called us when we were down in Tennessee, and uh, she's actually coming up for the entire weekend. She's going to be here for the hymn sing. And then I says, hey, guess what we got going on on Saturday morning at 930? And so she is looking forward to coming. I asked her to speak for you ladies. And so she'll be speaking at the ladies' prayer breakfast on the uh, 25th, and then she'll be in our church on the 26th. And I asked her to give a short, um, let us know what's going on in the Philippines and in her life. And so she'll be speaking. Uh, I say, hey, if you preach a good sermon, I'll just, we'll just have an invitation when you're done. So, uh, but she, she knows what to do. So she'll be with us on that 26th, just giving us an update uh, in her life. And still the ministry in, in the Philippines is still going strong. Um, so she should be a blessing to you ladies on, the, on that Saturday morning. Okay. <clears throat> what else? Anything else? Uh, church director, anybody need to know about pictures? I don't know what's going on with pictures. No, we're completed, but we're just waiting on a couple of two families that right. have been sick. Been sick, yes. Hopefully they'll be here tonight. Yes, hopefully. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of sickness going around from what I understand. Uh, if you want to get on a church email list, sorry, I haven't, had, I haven't had time to get that done yet, so get your name on the list back there. It's not back there. Uh, if you still need to make changes on the church directory, make sure that you do that. Uh, the AED machine came in. Uh, Doug's coming by maybe tomorrow. He and I are going to try to get this thing mounted and, and hooked up to the uh, Wi-Fi. It's a Wi-Fi thing. I don't know anything about this. We've got to figure it out. We'll, we'll get it all worked out, and um, hopefully we can get somebody. Any updates on the American Red Cross or whatever? No, American Heart Association? Yeah, I want, I want some information I need, and we'll get you. Okay. Get we want to get that moving. Um, summer camp, you can see all the stuff in the bulletin. I don't want to spend all day on announcements. I'll take care of some more stuff the next service. Just got to look at your faces for a moment. I've missed your faces. Come on, you haven't missed my, this face. <laughs> How can you miss this face? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Anyway, let's see. Birthdays. Anybody with a birthday? Titus. Ah. Rachel. Where's Rachel? There she is. When's your birthday, Rachel? Tell us all. Thursday. All right. Who else? Did you sing to him? Yeah. All right. Got James. Who didn't sing to James last week? Sing to him right now, quick, hurry up. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I know. Anybody else with a birthday we need to sing to? Anybody with an anniversary we need to sing to? All right, let's sing to Rachel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I forgot. If you're on my text messaging, you got a text message from me yesterday, yes? Yeah. You all did? Okay, we're having a very short, quick, serious prayer meeting after the morning service with all the men. <clears throat> okay? If you got that text message yesterday, you'll know that. We'll probably just go across the hall. Choir wants to do a choir practice, so the choir, if you want to meet without the guys that are in it, you can, or you're going to have to wait. Fair enough? Okay, but guys, very important that we have a quick prayer meeting. Doug is going to explain later uh, what that's all about. All right? Okay, you are dismissed to your classes. Hey, Doug. Is this working, Doug? It is now. <clears throat> There is a handout back there, people. It's called Baptist Distinctive. So if you could get those, get them passed out, <clears throat> please. I'm hoping this will work. I've been out of, I've been out of uh, practice here for a couple weeks. When you get this old, when you get out of practice, you kind of have a tendency to forget things. You know how that goes, right? Judd? <clears throat> All 
How are you doing, Jim? Good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm cold, but I'm fine. <clears throat> it's not working. I have it plugged in. While uh, Doug comes and tries to get us going, in Mississippi, the temperatures were mid-70s to about 80. Beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful. I tried. I brought the good weather back as far as Tennessee, and it said, we're not going any further. It's too cold up north. <clears throat> I didn't hear you. Well, that's what I'd like to do. And uh, we, we spent two days in Florida, and it was uh, when we came out from church last Sunday, the car thermometer said it was over 90 degrees. Oh, loved it, loved it. You know me and heat, I like that. Uh, but driving down the road, it dropped down to in the upper 80s in Florida for two days. We were there. And then we went to Georgia, and the temperatures were low 70s, nice, very comfortable. And um, then we went to Tennessee, and it, we met with somebody there, and Temperatures were okay. It's getting a little cooler, though, in Tennessee. And then the rest is history. Came home to this. <laughs> but it is nice and warm down south. <clears throat> oh, keep talking. Okay. Um, he, he might be a while. Three weeks ago, Brother Corey was here. Remember Brother Corey Shark here? Remember what he taught on three weeks ago? What did he teach on? Baptist, Baptist distinctives. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up where he, kind of where he left off and, and uh, what? No, I told him. I said, you know what? I like this. I want to do this study. And he only touched on two things that day. And so I sat down and generated this, uh, this lesson um, without his help. I did it myself. <laughs> So uh, what I want to do is um, briefly go over all of these, and you have a handout uh, with each of the acrostics. I did the acrostics, Baptists with an S on the end, and then you can fill in the blanks as you go through. Let me try to, there we go. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate it. I don't know what he did, nor, do I. <laughs> nor does he. <clears throat> you push buttons. Okay. Um, what we need to think about and realize that, uh, let, let, me, let me ask this question. You won't, you won't be embarrassed if you answer even incorrectly. I don't think there is an incorrect answer. But let me ask you this question, just something to think about. Why are you a Baptist? I didn't hear that. Why are you a Baptist? Anybody want to tell me why you are a Baptist? Jeff? Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> because he knows me and that's why he came here. All right. Yes, brother? Teaching the Bible. Teaching the Bible. Okay, very good. Anybody else? Yes, Sarah? I started out a Baptist because my aunt taught me about the Spirit. Yep. That's how I started, but then I stayed a Baptist. Very good. David? Okay, and that's why you're a Baptist? Okay, good. Who else? Judd? Yes. All right. I saw the yes, Doug. Uh, Dave, because uh, Baptists preach and teach uh, you're saved by faith. Mm -hmm. Once you're saved, you're saved for eternity. Yep. And also, most independent Baptists believe in the same thing of Bible. Yes. Those are some of the basic reasons I'm here. They're ba basic and they're big. They're good reasons. Yes. Anybody else? <clears throat> Just a thought on it. Mary. Okay, amen, amen. You've all been exactly correct. No wrong answers yet. I'm a Baptist because I started going to a Baptist church uh, when I was 13 years old. And we, uh, we went to Faith Baptist Church in Baldwinsville. And we had a pastor that cared enough about us. Um, and we had neighbors up the street that cared enough about us. Um, they started picking us up, me and my 
brothers and started taking us to uh, Faith Baptist Church. And then uh, the pastor would come by, Pastor Merle Vunk. He was my first pastor. And uh, he's the one that started Faith Baptist Church in Baldwinsville. And then he started coming by with his little sob, his little German-made sob, and picking us up and taking us off to church. And really, he's, he put a lot of time into us. Uh, it took me a while to get saved, but at the age of 17, I was saved at that, in that Baptist church. And then shortly thereafter, uh, Temple Baptist had started in Baldwinsville, and my parents, our parents, started to go to Temple Baptist. And so we, we went over there. Kathy was baptized by uh, Pastor Don Perkins, and uh, he's the one that started Temple Baptist in Baldwinsville. Uh, he passed away about 10 years ago, but we were actually with his family uh, in Mississippi. That's where we go uh, once in a while. When, we, when we're in Mississippi, we go and spend time with the Perkins family. Uh, Mrs. Perkins is still alive, and so we spent some time with her and took her shopping, and she, uh, we really enjoyed uh, her company. Her son, Paul Perkins, uh, some of you know if you've been in this church long enough, he was a missionary to the Philippines for a number of years, and we supported him while he was a missionary there. Now he pastors uh, Grace Baptist Church in Ocean Springs, and that's where we went to church. I preached his, uh, their chapel. They have a, uh, a Christian school. They run about 45 in it, and then I preached on a Wednesday night there for him. Uh, he's a good friend, and then Stephen Perkins, his brother, is an evangelist, and we support him. You should know that. <laughs> and he'll be with us next month for maybe two or three days of preaching in the middle of the week. Uh, he's, Stephen and his wife, Christy, will be up um, and spending a little bit of time. They want to get up. They haven't been up here in a few years, and so he called not long ago and said, hey, we want to come up and see you guys, and, and I says, good. Well, if you come, you've got to preach, so uh, I enjoy his preaching. But uh, there's a lot of different reasons that people have for being a Baptist. But I think one of the uh, primary reasons, and we're going to look at all of these uh, steps here in a few minutes, and we're going to go through them. I don't know if I'll get through them all. Probably won't because we have Bible verses that we're going to look at each, each and every one of them. But um, being a Baptist, really, uh, some people are embarrassed to be called a Baptist. I would never be embarrassed to call a Baptist. People say, hey, what are you? I, well, I'm a Christian, but hey, I, I pastor a Baptist church. I have no qualms in saying that. I have no, I'm not embarrassed, I'm not ashamed to be called a Baptist. In a day and age when political correctness seems to rule and ecumenism is on the rise, it's important to understand why you believe what you believe. It's probably the most important thing. Um, and, and I would hope and pray by coming to this church and, and sitting under either myself or Paul or James or whoever's preaching or teaching here, um, you need to know why you believe what you believe. Um, Jim said he comes here because he met me and knows me, and, but that's not just the only reason he comes here. He comes for the Bible, I hope. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, I met Judd at, a, at the bus garage, and he started coming because uh, of, you know, meeting, meeting me, and we got talking, and, and, which is good. I mean, that's the way it should be. You, you need to be a good testimony and a good witness to where, wherever you go, and hopefully people will, you know, come to your church that you invite them to come to. And that's happened uh, here uh, in, in the church. But there are many Baptists today who are removing the name Baptist from their church. I used to drive a bus run over to Newark every day. Uh, it was an early run. I drove the van and uh, went down this one street over to the bus garage. The kid that I was taking over there, he was then being transferred to a bus to Rochester. And I went by this church every day. I think it was Calvary Baptist Church. One day I drove by it, and it was no longer Calvary Baptist Church. It was Calvary Christian, Fel I don't forget what it was, but they had removed Baptist from its name. It always stuck in my mind. I, I always wanted to stop there, but I couldn't. Driving a school bus, I couldn't stop there. I always wanted to go in there and just say, why would you take Baptist off your, your church name? just wanted to ask him that. I wasn't, going to start a, I wasn't going to start an argument with a guy or anything. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to ask. I, said, I just wanted to hear his, their reasoning as to why they removed Baptist from the name. And, and I kind of know the answer to that because it can be offensive to some people. Um, but I'm not offended by the name Baptist. When we travel, we're going to a place that we don't normally know. I look for a Baptist church to attend. Uh, when we were going over to Florida uh, to see Kathy's half-sister, she had never seen face-to-face -face before. We had a great visit with her. I looked for a good independent Baptist church to attend last Sunday. We went to Calvary Baptist Church uh, near Lady Lake. It's a 
pretty good sized. Have you ever heard of the Villages, a senior living? Um, it was right there. We were staying right in the, kind of in the middle of that. Everybody drives a golf cart. All these old people driving golf carts all over the place. I, Kathy says, you know, we could get used to this place. I says, I know. I says, we could come here and we'd get a his and her golf cart. And I said, we'll get you a pink one and I'll have me a dark blue one. <laughs> they're all decked out with lights on the side. We saw them at night. They're driving along and they're, they got little lanes that they can actually drive these golf carts uh, in. I don't see them on the main roads because they'd probably get run over, <laughs> but they're on all the side streets going here and going there and just zooming around. It was really neat to see them. They're parked all over the place. Uh, but we went to Calvary Baptist Church last week and it was a great church. I felt like the youngest person there. <laughs> Uh, looking around, I said to Kathy, I said, I think we're the youngest people here. And, uh, you know, we're almost 70 years old, and there was a, a lot of old people in the church. But they had some families with kids, too, which is good. you got to have some families with kids. But it was a good church. The Sunday school lesson was great. The pastor was there, very friendly, uh, kind of like what we are. And uh, walked in and, and met him, and, and he even said, hey, we're a friendly church. This is good. <laughs> And but people were coming up to us and greeting us and, hey, where are you from? What are you doing here? You know, all of that kind of stuff that people ask. And uh, gave us a nice little bag of all kinds of goodies with a mug in there. I like mugs. And some other neat things that they, they give out to their visitors. And, and so we, we just had a really good time, but we were blessed by being in that church. But that's what I, we look for when we go on a trip. We don't go on a trip without going to church somewhere. Or if we're going to be in an area like in Mississippi, we, we attended all the services of uh, Brother Perkins Church, Grace Baptist Church. Um, we tried to get to a church this past Wednesday, and we couldn't get to a church service. And so we tuned into James um, teaching and preaching here, which we were blessed by that. I hope, I think you were too. We tried to get to James's brother's church, which wasn't too far from where we were going to stay uh, Wednesday night. But we're driving along, and my GPS said we'll get in around 6. I figured we'd have time to get to the hotel, get changed. We weren't in church clothes. You know, I'm in my jeans traveling. And so uh, we wanted to have time to change and get settled and then get over to the church. And then Suzanne calls and says, oh, by the way, their church starts at 6. I says, well, text, because Brother Paul, his brother, was expecting us to come. I said, well, text them back, and we're not going to be in, in the area in time. So, And we didn't. We didn't get in until after 6. And so... Uh, but we had time enough to turn into, you know, the church service here. But I got to tell you, it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, I know some people are so used to just tuning in now, it's, and that's their church. And for some people, that's okay because maybe physically they can't get out and get to church. But I'll tell you, it's not the same. Than being in church, physically being able to see people and talk to people, that's what that's to me that, you know, that is extremely important. I know there's times that you're going to have to maybe watch online, and, and I'm not against that if it's, you have a really, really, really good excuse for that. But just to say, I don't feel like going, or I don't, I don't want to go down there, I don't, you know, and just, I'm just going to sit home today and just watch it online. That's not, to me, that's not a reason to do that. I almost, after COVID, I almost eliminated this live streaming, but Doug back there talked me out of it. Thank you. <laughs> but he had good reasons for it. And, and I understood that. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll keep it going. I just don't want people to get so used to staying home and sitting in their jammies, you know, drinking a cup of coffee and, and watching TV. Uh, I, don't, I never wanted to become a TV evangelist <laughs> or a preacher. And uh, I'm just waiting for all that money to come in. <laughs> the millions and millions that some of these... Uh, uh, TV preachers have coming in. <clears throat> we don't, I haven't got that yet, so I don't know. Um, some of them have their own airplanes and jets and airports and fancy cars and houses, and we haven't got that yet. Got a pilot in church, but we don't have, uh, I haven't got my own plane yet. Kathy was saying the other day, or this past, while we were trying, she said, oh, you know, we're on the road two days down to Mississippi and two days back, and, you know, you're in a car for eight hours just driving. She says, oh, I wish we could just beam ourselves. I says, well, if you'd let me get my pilot's license, I says, we can buy, we'll get a plane and we'll just fly everywhere we got to go. Lester Roloff did it, <laughs> right? And uh, he died in a plane crash. <laughs> yeah, him and some of the kids from his uh, school down in Texas. Um, but, you know, hey, if you're going to go, that's a good, quick, and easy way to go, I guess. I don't know. I, would, I wouldn't want to go that way. Absolutely not. 
All right, let me, let's get into this. Stop interrupting me so we can get into this thing. There's a lot of different Baptists out there also. You ever notice that? I mean, I just wrote down a few, but there are, there's the Southern Baptists. And I know, I, I know I've got some friends that are Southern Baptists. There's regular Baptists. There's free will Baptists. There's American Baptists. There's Seventh-day Baptists. There's independent Baptists. That's what we are. We're independent Baptists. Uh, Roger Williams and John Clark, his fellow citizen, uh, in working for religious freedom, are credited with founding the Baptist Church or the Baptist faith in North America in 1638, shortly after the pilgrims came over from, uh, from Europe. Williams established the first Baptist church in America in Providence, Rhode Island, and Clark was the minister in Newark, Rhode Island, uh, when, he was, when, he, when it was organized as the first Baptist church in Newark, uh, Newport, I'm sorry, Newport, not Newark, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, in 1644. So uh, the first churches that were in America were Baptist churches. Isn't that amazing? Uh, these men, Roger Williams and John Clark, these men were Baptists, and they started the first Baptist churches uh, that are formed in here. So let's get into this a little bit, and you can fill in the blanks. Um, and we've taken the, uh, I, I put it in the sheets, uh, at least uh, the acrostic way. The first one, and this is what Brother Corey touched on t three weeks ago. He touched on two that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, but I do want to spend a little bit of time on these because we're going to go right down through each of these, <coughs> and so you can write them in. And also, I didn't add the scriptures. I, I quickly did this this morning. I wasn't even going to do a sheet, but I said, no, nah, they want a sheet. So I did a sheet. And so you can make notes on the sheet. You can put the scriptures down that we're going to look at uh, next to that. But these are reasons why um, we are Baptists. These are the distinctives um, that we stand for. There's a lot of other things too, but, but these are the basic things that we stand for. We stand for biblical authority. The Bible. We believe the Bible is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. That's what we believe. Now, we go so far to believe that the King James Bible is our final authority Amen. in all matters of faith and practice. Amen. We don't use any other versions in this church. There are some Baptist churches that do. Um, there are some Baptist churches have gotten away from the King James Bible, and I, I feel bad for them. Amen. I really do. you got to watch everything. When you think you're going to a Baptist church, you, I investigate first. Um, I check them out. I, now everybody today's got uh, websites, and so I go on their website and I look and I check them out. And are, do they use the King James Bible? Do they believe the King James Bible is the Word of God? I look for their their statement of faith. I look for their doctrinal statement, whatever they have. I, I check out their music too, because I know a lot of Baptist churches have got their music has gone haywire. I mean, it's gone gone con, con, completely contemporary. First thing I looked at when we walked it, uh, and I didn't see it on their website, but Calvary Baptist last Sunday morning, first thing I looked for when I walked in on the stage was drums. Guess what they didn't have? Drums. I said, well, that's a good sign. If there's no drums on the stage, I'm, I, I think we're okay. And their music was totally like what we use. Now, the only thing is a big church, and they have the, the words up on the screen, but they're all hymns. We sang hymns. Um, we didn't, you know, sing anything else. There were hymns, but they put the, the words on the screens, in case, um, you know, people couldn't look at the little letters. Remember, um, we were the youngest people there. And so they put big letters up on the screen and so people can see that. Um, but I look, I like a hymn book. I just like a hymn book. I, look, I like to look at the hymn. So when, I, when I sing a song, if I don't know it that well, I, I, look, I read the notes. I don't know what they all mean, but I look at the notes. If the note goes up, my voice goes up. If the note goes down, my voice goes down. That's just the way I am when I sing a hymn. And I can pretty much pick up uh, the music by listening to the piano by watching the notes and, and how it goes. Um, so I, I, like, I like hymn books. and they, they had a few in this church, but, you know, they put the words up on. The, uh, on and, and they were familiar uh, songs that we sing here in our church, which to me is a blessing. Uh, they were King James only, this church, which I look for when I go. Uh, because there's a lot of Baptist churches today that are just, they're not like us at all. And I don't know if you've ever gone out there in the world and, and gone traveling and went to just be, well, it's, it's a Baptist church, it's got to be good. Not anymore. Many, many years ago, you could pretty much go to a Baptist church and it was, it was a good church. 
Uh, but um, things, things change over years. Uh, I, I heard a preacher say this uh, when we were there. We met with a lot of guys, and we had a lot of, we had a lot of good fellowship. And one preacher thought that he had heard that about 40 years is the extent of a church. I would hope and pray that that's not the case, but he's saying the lifespan of a, of a church nowadays is about 40 years. And uh, I hope and pray that that's not true here because we're already over 40 years, I think. We were started in 81, so do the math. Somebody quickly do the math. How old is this church? 42 years. All right, so uh, we're, we're, not, we're not declining, we're increasing. Praise God for that. There's a lot of churches, though, that are declining rapidly, uh, and it's sad. But again, the Bible is to be our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Look at Matthew. Write this, these verses down. Matthew chapter 24. And verse, we'll just look at a, two or three verses in each of these points. <clears throat> I know, now listen, I know there's a lot more verses that we could look at. I'm just, I jotted down a few to cover each of these points that we're going to look at. And um, you, you can write down other verses if you want. I just, I didn't have time to put down every verse that's, that we could look at. Um, but to give you some basic ideas and basic thoughts on this. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 in verse 35. Matthew 24, 35. Could you help me read today? Anybody want to read that verse? TJ? Amen. We know that the Lord's words will never pass away. And where is His words recorded? Right here. You have His recorded words on your lap in front of me on your device, whatever it is that you use for the Bible today. Uh, but we have His words, <clears throat> and they're recorded, and they're finalized, and we don't need any more. We don't need to take away any words from the Bible, and that's what all these new versions do, and they add things that are not in God's Word. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. Who'd like to read First Peter 1 23? <clears throat> David? See how important the Word of God is? The only way that you can be saved is through the Word of God. You've got to hear the Word of God. You've got to either hear it, read it. Somebody's got to quote it to you. Um, when you lead somebody to the Lord, you always should use the Bible. Um, I like to actually have a Bible opened and let them look at the verse and have them read the verse. Uh, now, maybe there's situations where you can't do that. There's been lots of times that I've witnessed that I haven't been able to actually have my Bible. I always have a New Testament on me, so I'll, I'll show them maybe the verse if, if we can do that. Um, or quote, at least quote the scripture. Uh, quote it as it's written in the Bible. Don't put it in your own words. Quote it as the Bible has it. You understand that? Quote it as the Bible has it in it. In other words, that takes memorization. And so you need to memorize, I think every Christian should memorize the Romans road. Uh, Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23, Romans 5.8, Romans 6.23, Romans 5, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 9 and 13. That's the basic Romans road. You should memorize those verses and have them in your head and in your heart so when you're talking to somebody and you don't have your Bible with you, you can at least quote the Scriptures. Because by quoting the Scriptures, by saying the Scriptures, it gets into their mind and it gets, gets into their heart. And God uses the Word of God in order to bring somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what Peter said there, being born again. Not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God. And so that's important. Go back to 2 Timothy. Again, this is, what, this is important. We, we need to really get a hold of this because biblical authority uh, is the authority of our church. I don't just get up here and give you a bunch of, uh, of my opinions. Now, when we preach, when men preach and uh, ladies teach ladies, you can give illustrations, you can... You can expound and explain uh, the Word of God the best that you know how to uh, when you're doing that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we do when we teach and preach. 
we take the Word of God and we expound it. We give it out to the people. And uh, we, we do it as the Lord directs us and the, as the Lord guides us. But the Bible needs to be our authority. Um, I, I, I've known some preachers that will preach and they never open up a Bible. Uh, I know they have all the Bible verses in their notes. I have a lot of them. As a matter of fact, I think I have most of mine already written out uh, in front of me. But I like to turn the pages and look at it from the Bible. That's just the way I am. Uh, I, I was at a preacher's meeting one time where the pastor, the guy preaching, put the Bible up on the pulpit and he never opened it once. Um, I don't think he ever asked us to turn to any verses. He quoted them, which is okay, but I, I want to look at them. I want to open up the Bible. I want to hear you turn into pages. I like to hear pages being turned uh, in, in the audience because that means that you're looking up the verses yourself. Amen. It's important to do that. 2 Timothy chapter 3 Verses 15 and 16, somebody, can somebody read those two verses? And 17, 15, 16, and 17. Doug, Cherry. Uh, the all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished within all good works. Now when you look at that word in verse 17, I don't know how your Bible has it. It should be thoroughly. Right? No, 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 you, you, you were close. Do you see that? Do you see that word? It's not thoroughly, it's throughly. You say, no, that's a funny word. We don't use, we don't use that kind of a word today, do we? We really don't. Um, it's, it's, we would call that, and this is okay, it's an archaic word. But it has a distinct definition. You can write this in your Bible if you want, or just put it up in your brain. It means from start to finish. Okay, that's what throughly means. Through the entire thing. That's what the word, that, that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished from start to finish, completed with everything that you need. There's nothing more that you, you don't need anything other than the Bible. You don't need anything other than the word of God. Now, I, look, I read commentaries. I read books. You, many of us do as we study. We'll look up things. I, I do it all the time, preparing for a message. Um, I'll look up different thoughts and different ideas. But really, we don't need anything other than the Bible. That's what we have. Throughly furnished unto all good works. Um, again, it means from start to finish and to finish out. Throughout. To finish out. To finish, as Paul uh, talked about. So, uh, the first one we see here is biblical authority. Number two is the autonomy of the local church. So write that down, autonomy of the local church. Autonomy means to be self-governed and independent. Write that down, self-governed and independent. That's what uh, autonomy of the local church is. Uh, and so the local church is an independent body. We're not connected to some hierarchy somewhere. Amen. We're not connected to the Southern Baptist Convention. Southern Baptist Convention oversees all of their Southern Baptist churches. And you pretty much got to do things the way that they want you to do things. Um, you support the missionaries that they recommend. Um, I don't know if they get into I don't. I know one, I know two Southern Baptist preachers that I've become friends with over the years. I've never sat down and, and talked with them on this particular thing, so I'm not really speaking a uh, with, with the knowledge of that, but I do know that uh, the Southern Baptist Church will oversee uh, the, local, the smaller local church. Uh, it's a big convention. It's the biggest Baptist convention in the United States, the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, but again, autonomy means that we're independent. And so when people ask, oh, what kind of Baptist are you? We're independent Baptist. We're just independent. We self-govern ourselves under the Lord Jesus Christ and under the pastor. Uh, that's how we're governed uh, in, our, in our church. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church, not some convention somewhere. Um, there's something that we, was big in this state at one time, was the Baptist Bible Fellowship International. Um, and, I, and I used to go to the, we used to call them the BBFs, uh, the Baptist Bible Fellowships. Pastor Overton and I went to several of them. They started to get away from some of the basic things of the scriptures over the years. Um, Dan Smith, 
that used to pastor Buckley Road Baptist Church until he retired, he was in charge of the BBF in New York State. And one day, a bunch of pastors came to him and says, we don't want you to be the president of this, of this organization anymore because we want to make some changes and we know that you don't want to make them. Their changes were twofold, Bible and music. And, and Brother Smith was very firm on the King James Bible and non-contemporary music. Well, the BBF wanted to get away from that. And Dan said, hey, fine, you, you don't want me anymore. I'll, uh, I'll step aside. And there was no fights or anything. But the BBF got to the point where it just kind of drifted away from the, from the basics. Um, there are some churches that only, if they're a BBF church, they only support BBFI missionaries. Um, where the BBF, Baptist Bible Fellowship International, recognizes certain missionaries, and they, they come out under the auspices of that particular fellowship. And so that, they're the only ones that they'll have in uh, for their church, and they're the only ones that they'll support. We're not like that. Uh, we have multiple missionaries from, from all different mission, uh, missions boards all over the place. Uh, I, ha I know some pastors that if you're not from Peter Ruckman's school in Pensacola, Florida, they won't have you in. They're just they're secluded that way, um, very. And I, I know a pastor that when he came into the church, if you weren't, a, weren't from that particular college, they kicked you off the mission board. Without, that was the only reason you kick somebody off the mission board because you're not from a certain college. But see, that's how controlling some people can be become. That's how controlling some of these organizations will get. Uh, oh, they preach the Bible, they preach the King James Bible, but they become very controlling. So we have to be very, very careful about that. Uh, we are an independent Baptist church. Uh, Temple Baptist was, and independent still is considered, independent Baptist church. But uh, it's sad that over the years, churches will start changing. And that's what we have to be careful about here, that we don't change into something that Amen. the Bible doesn't want us to change into. <clears throat> we don't let a man or a group or a college or an organization tell us how to run our church. We run our church the way we feel biblically that we're going to run our church. No religious hierarchy outside of the local church may dictate a church's beliefs or practices. That's what it means to be or have the autonomy of the local church, self-governed and independent. Uh, uh, now listen to this too. Autonomy does not mean isolation. I know some pastors that will not come out of their church and go to another fellowship meeting. They will not talk to another pastor. Um, that's sad. Um, just because you're independent doesn't mean you can't fellowship with other pastors or other churches. I have no problem letting you know what's going on at Freedom or this church or that church or whatever. I'll post things on the board. And we're, we're looked at as a little oddity here because we do that. Amen. I have some pastors say, aren't you afraid that these people are going to leave your church for that? Other? Listen, if you want to leave the church, that's up to you. I'm not going to keep my thumb on you. And I'm not, I'm not, my job is not to control you. Uh, if you want to go off to another church, then go off to another church. If you like it here, stay here. Right. Right. Amen. If you don't like me and you don't like the church, there's other churches you, you can go to. I don't want that. I, we want everybody to come. We want, I want everybody to love me. You're the same way. You want everybody to love you too, pretty much. We, uh, yeah, we're all narcissists. Um, we want everybody, I want everybody to love this church. I mean, that's just, as the pastor, you want everybody to love your church and want to be in your church. But look around. There's a bunch of empty seats here today. Not everybody's going to come here. But I don't want to be isolated to the point where I can't go out and, and meet with other pastors. Um, I'll leave that one alone. I've got to be careful what I say. <clears throat> but again, I think fellowship is important. I think pastors ought to fellowship with other pastors of like faith. Now, you know, we can get into the ecumenism movement, the ecumenical movement that's going on in this country, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse as we, not we, as the people enter into the tribulation period. One day there's going to be a one world government, and there's going to be a one world church, and there's going to be a one world Bible. There's going to be a lot of one world things, and we're inching closer and closer to all of that. 
So we have to be careful of this ecumenical movement that is, again, driving a lot of churches into the ecumenical movement. Um, this church is not going to fellowship, uh, and I'm not going to announce things that are going on in a church that does not believe like we believe. Uh, if you want to go and you hear about something, you, you go ahead. Uh, that's up to you. you are, you're free to do whatever you want. Uh, you want to go to a, a, you know, a, a Catholic thing, and then, then go to a Catholic thing. Um, years ago, Billy Graham was very non-ecumenical. And he preached some great, great sermons. I, I, in my car, I have his channel in my car, and I listen to Billy Graham preach. His old-time sermons are good. If you have serious uh, radio, turn into 460, I think it is. And I'm telling you, it's just constant preaching from the old Billy Graham. Uh, back, you know, 80s, 70s, I mean, he was, he was good at one time. But over the years, he started to embrace everybody. And uh, it, it just got to the point where it was very ecumenical. Um, many, many years ago, Kathy and I went to a Billy Graham crusade when it was in Syracuse. I just wanted to go see what it was like. That's all. But it was very ecumenical. He had all women get up and pray. I'm not saying women can't pray, but in front of all the men and from all the people in other churches, he couldn't find a, a pastor to get up and pray. But these were pastors. These women were pastors of other denominations and churches that uh, we, we would not fellowship with. I wouldn't fellowship with. And it's not that you're going to be, uh, it's not you can't befriend people. I have friends of other churches in the area. Um, but I'm just very careful as to what we allow our church to get involved in. That's, that's what I have to, uh, that's what I believe. <clears throat> huh? That's right. Constantly looking and, you know, put the little ears up and, and if it's, it, that's what the shepherd is supposed to do, is to protect the sheep and make sure that the sheep stay within the fold and not go off into some other things. <clears throat> Again, it's not that you can't befriend people and, and, have a, and be, be friendly. It does, you don't have to go down the street, and if you see somebody of another church, you know, stick your nose up in the air or, or jump to the other side of the street. No, I'm not like that at all. Um, I talk to pastors in the area. I've talked to people. Uh, just, I, I'm just not going to, I just can't fellowship to the point where, uh, because we'll get into a discussion after a while, and, and it's going to be this against them. You know how it goes. All right. And I'm running out of time, and I probably, I'll pick this up next week because I really want to cover this. The church at Corinth, um, you've read Corinthians? They had a lot of problems, a lot of problems. But how did Paul tell them to take care of the problem within the church? He didn't go outside of the church. Now, they wrote to him and said, hey, we got some problems. But he wrote back with the advice that, well, you take care of that. We, they had, there was people going to, uh, to law against one another. They were suing one another within the church. And what did Paul say? Handle that within your church. We'll cover that next week. Let's, uh, let's pray and we'll get ready for the next service. Father, we do thank you and praise you, Lord, uh, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that we can... I thank you, Lord, that I'm a Baptist. And I thank you, Lord, for the people we have in our church that are Baptists. And Lord, I pray that you'd continue to bless this lesson as we uh, learn and, and get into these different distinctives. Father, I pray that you would guide and direct us. And Lord, be with us in our next service. We pray that you would bless the message and use it for your honor and for your glory and bring many people into the house of God. And we pray these